My name is Erin Bradley. I'm a teacher at Brian Evan Primary School in Johannesburg, South Africa. In this video, we will be exploring getting users' input via the input prompt. It builds up on our many previous lessons that used variables, the random word function to bring in computer-generated output. I'd suggest that you watch this video a few times to try and get a clear understanding of how to do many of the things that I show. Everything in this lesson is done with Purple Mash using the print to screen. Most of us have an understanding of how to get to print to screen, so I'm not really going to go over that in this video. We're going to be focusing on print to screen. We've gone through all the challenges that are involved here. It's important that you go through those four challenges, starting with Hello World. They give you some sort of understanding for the more complex tasks. I'm just, I'm just going to do the last challenge, which is the most creative of them. And I hope that this will give you some sort of understanding of what we're going to do. We're going to start off by dragging in a repeat loop. And that's this little yellow block. We drag the repeat loop into the code window. to see how it gets that orange outline. This repeat loop repeats five times. And that's going to determine how many stories we're going to write. So at the moment, we've got five stories. You can go with the up and down arrow to choose how many stories you'd like in this repeat loop. I'm going to hold down control and turn the wheel of my mouse to just zoom in a bit. And there you can see with the wheel of my mouse, I can zoom in and see that a lot better. Now I'm going to drag in the print to screen block. You could choose the random function, but remember, we're going to underline our story. So I'm going to use something to underline. I'm going to choose the star on my keyboard. I'm just doing a, typing a whole lot of stars and I'll use that to underline each one of my stories. And now to just add in a line above this, this, I'm going to just type the young lady looked at the stars. The young lady looked at the stars. Okay, so that's just going to be one of the lines of my story. You're going to give a lot more thought to your story, so it'll probably make a lot more sense than what I'm doing here. But this is an example, and I'm hoping that it'll inspire you to put together a story that is computer generated. A story that's going to make a whole lot more sense than what I'm going to do. Now I'd like to go and visit the JavaScript with C code, and here you can see our loop playing out five times and writing the same thing every single time. The young lady looked at the stars. JavaScript is mostly used to create interactions within the browser. Now I'm using Chrome. I'm going to create a variable outside of the loop. So VAR for variable, and I'm just going to call it H equals, and you can notice everything's red showing that it is an error, random word, random word, and round brackets, close the round brackets, and we're going to choose an adjective, which will describe a noun or it could describe an animal. So here I'm going to go plus, then we need a space, because remember between one word and another, we need to have a space, and then a plus, random, look at the capital word, round brackets, and we'll choose animals and close the round bracket with a semicolon at the end. The random word function allows the computer to choose. Here we have an adjective and in the second case an animal. And you can see everything's red so we have some sort of error and we need to find where that error is. So I'm going to show you how to comment out certain lines. I'm going to put two forward slashes in front of that VAR for create a variable. And that indicates that this line, the top line, is not code anymore. Now it would be read as code because everything is read. But if I put those two forward slashes like that, then it indicates that we're dealing with a comment. And this is very useful for you to know. Comments allow you to easily find where your errors are. Our computer will not read that first line because it's commented out. If I take away those forward slashes, it's now code, but it's indicating we have an error. That takes us to debugging. So let's see if we can find where our mistake lies in this code. So if I put forward, sl forward slashes, two of them, we know we're going to comment out that line. 
I can pick up that that should be a lowercase letter, so R must be in a lowercase, and you can see everything has gone white, indicating that there is no error in this first line, creating that variable called H. Now, it's very important to improve your typing skills because when you type those forward slashes and you start commenting, you can start understanding what you're writing in your code. You can start describing what the code does. And that's important to understand what's happening. A good coder always tries to have meaningful code, that everything's understandable. So here is the hero, and that's comment commented right at the top. Here is the hero animal, and I could underline it like that. Now, those two lines that I've just typed with the equal sign and the first line here is the hero animal will be commented out. They are not code. They're just describing what's happening in your code. Please try to get that right. Try to start using commenting in your coding. Two forward slashes would indicate that we are commenting in our code. And I'm just going to write here, we use a variable inside our loop because we have that loop starting with the four and ending with that curly brackets. So here we have a variable in the loop and it's part of the comment. And now I'm going to create a variable. We are going to call this variable X and I'm going to do a little bit of copying over here. So I'm going to select random word adjective, random word animals. And I'm just going to right click on that, copy, take away that R, right click, or control V and I've got random adjective and a random animal again variable X is found inside the loop it is otherwise identical to the one that was outside of the loop which we called H now everything's red so that indicates it's not, not entirely making sense so we need to get some error detection we need to find where our error is so i'm going to put a plus the x and that's going to use the variable that's inside the loop plus and we'll add in a little bit more code looked at the lady whose eyes stared upwards there we go and everything goes white so that indicates we have no errors i'm just going to do some copying and pasting so i'm selecting right click copy and I'm going to bring in a line over here. So I'm going to right click or press control V and I'm going to change the variable to be the H, which is the variable that is created outside the loop. We want to just see how that plays out. Put a plus and a little bit of space here and that should be right. I want to compare X and H, H being the outside the loop and X inside the loop. I want to compare those two. So we're going to have that X over here, X, so looked at the, and then whatever is typed in X will be over there. And you can see it said, looked at the smelly whose eyes stared upwards. That doesn't really make sense, does it? You can see there's some sort of error going on here and everything's still white. So that's a little bit of a problem, which we'll find in a minute. We have a case of an error and yet everything's white so there must be some small error and look that it says animals i'm going to try just change that to animal let's play our code and see how that plays out and you can see that look it says the soft looked at the smelly cat smelly cat the random word function should call the list of animal not animals so we need to correct that so we're going to have to change this one so i'm going to change animals to animal and that should be better. And you can see now we've got the small cat looked at the loud dog. So we're having more sense, it's working. Now the computer needs to retain that information. Whatever was typed in, describe the monster, needs to be able to be kept and stored somewhere so that we can feed it into our story. So this is how we do it. We're gonna type read input. And this is going to bring whatever was typed in, describe the monster, is going to come out in our story. So he looked at the, and then whatever we read input. So describe the monster, and I'm going to type in, and I'm just thinking of a story about a rabbit. So I'm going to type sickly looking rabbit. And that's going to be fed into our story. So we're going to, whatever we click on here, the smelly dog looked at the sickly looking rabbit. There it is, right there. Sickly looking rabbit is part of our story. 
and you can see we've underlined our story so now we go to the second prompt oh i've got these t's a whole lot of these t's just coming up so i just got to get rid of that describe the monster and let's go with a mole this time so evil mole with a black eye that's what we're going to call it the evil mole with a black eye oh there you can see evil mole with a black eye is part of the second story in the first story we had the sickly looking rabbit now we've got the evil mole with a black eye so let's do the third story so if i type in now we're going through the third loop the ugly dog with a rabid mouth so we'll have an ugly dog with a rabid mouth it's got rabies so that'll be part of the third story if we click on there you will see ugly dog with a rabid mouth are you beginning to see how this input prompt can be used very creatively we have the input prompt and the read input which allows us to use them so creatively we've got the input prompt describe the monster which i've just selected and we've got read input which is going to put whatever was typed in as part of the story so read input in this case would be whatever the monster was described to be. And then we got our variable over there. We're using the random word and again, the random adjective, random word, adjective, and the random word animal in the loop called X, the X variable. We created a variable called X. I know this seems a bit complicated, though we have done this in a number of our lessons, so it should be meaningful and we have reiterated this over and over again, so it should be more understandable to you. The only thing that comes through in this lesson is the input prompt and the read input, which I've shown here. Our grade six and grade seven learners shouldn't have a problem understanding this as we have done it over and over for the last five lessons. We've used a repeat loop, we've printed to screen, we've underlined our work, using the stars in this particular case we've created variables that are inside and outside the loop and we very creatively have used the random word function to choose an adjective and a random animal in this particular example i'd like you to go and practice this it's an opportunity for you to develop your skills i can see how easily this can link up with lots of interesting features of computers like chatbots I'm sure some of you would understand what chatbots are. Here you're getting input from the user and you're using that input to filter it into your story. Thank you very much for watching. I hope that you will go ahead and practice this as much as possible. And I look forward to seeing your code.